Hello and welcome to EDU. I'm Eric DeReese. Today we're going to talk about the difference between experiential learning and head fake learning. Hey, wait a minute, i got to stop the video for just a second here because um, I want to remind you to click the like button if you like this video. And while you're at it, why not click on the subscribe button so that when I make new videos you can get notifications about them. And uh, also at the end of the video, please leave your comments in the comments section. I'm really interested in your feedback, okay? All right, let's get back to the video. That's right, head fake learning. I was watching this incredible video of a Carnegie professor's last lecture. It was his last lecture because he knew he was going to die soon. And he wanted to inspire people to learn with the intention of living a better life. And I really appreciated what he was saying, but I also wanted to really analyze his theories from a critical thinking perspective so that I could get the most out of his lecture. Think about it, it's the end of his life. Now, in this analysis, Dr. Randy Posh's last lecture video is examined for its learning method values based on both traditional learning models and non-traditional learning models. Uh, the strengths and weaknesses of how Dr. Posh presents these models is also examined so as to determine a better way to present them to adult learners. The purpose of this examination is to compare the different models for adult learning so that one can better understand which method can be more effective in different adult learning scenarios. Dr. Posh stated that his last lecture was really a lesson on how to live your life. He mentioned how life is full of what he referred to as head fake learning. The example of head fake learning he first mentioned was in his experience as a child on the football team. He said that while many parents get their kids into team sports to learn to play the sport, they're really getting their kids into team sports to learn basic fundamentals of life while thinking that they're really there to learn how to play the sport, thereby teaching them skills which they will benefit from throughout their lives. He talked about how the fundamental lessons he learned as a child in football gave him a reference point which helped him throughout his life. Experiential learning and transformational learning best define the head fake learning mentioned in that it is a process whereby the learner unintentionally learns lessons from experiences as opposed to information and as a result is transformed into a new individual with new motivations and interests. The kids thought that they were just learning to play football but were really learning important values which would transform them into more successful individuals throughout their lives. These lessons continue to aid in the students' ongoing lessons in life. In experiential learning, Knowles states that adults tend to define themselves by their experiences, describing themselves as parents, spouses, workers, and so on. Dr. Posh gave a perfect example of that when he showed how his football often helped him think when he was working on a project or how his letterman's jacket gave him the confidence he needed to continue, reminding him of his lessons in football and how they were the fundamentals he had successfully used in his life. These symbols of his experience helped to convey the value of experiential learning and how it can continue to aid in the ongoing learning process. The weakness in Dr. Posh's presentation of experiential learning was that he did not clearly define how this helped in the ongoing learning process. Instead, he merely presented the symbols of those experiences and mentioned that they helped because it was a good idea to keep mementos of his life experiences to remind you of what you have achieved. His argument for experiential learning would have been stronger had he defined why that was important as a student of life. According to Maziro, transformational learning is a transformation in one of our beliefs or attitudes, or a transformation of our entire perspective. Dr. Posh clearly presented this in his story of how football transformed him as a child into a young adult with an understanding of certain values, which he could apply to his choices and learning experiences later in life. Maziro also argues that through transformational learning, we are freed of uncritical acceptance of 
others' purposes, values, and beliefs. This is an important point to mention because it acknowledges how this process can empower us to have the confidence and the drive to want to learn more. Unfortunately, Dr. Posh doesn't really mention this in his presentation, thereby missing an opportunity to strengthen his argument for transformational learning. Developing purpose and transformational knowing are both portions of traditional learning theories, which I believe apply to Dr. Posh's last lecture because he clearly communicated the value of exercising both in his lesson on how to live your life. Uh, developing purpose talks about how expanding competencies, developing interpersonal relationships, clarifying identity require some sense of direction and purpose, which causes the learner to ask themselves questions about who they really are and what they want to do because of who they really are. <laughs> and transformational knowing argues that encounters with alternative points of view appear to spark the shift from absolute to transformational knowing thereby causing them to realize that while some knowledge may be certain, other knowledge may not be. In Dr. Pasha's last lecture, he explains how the lessons he learned in his life propelled him to learn even more based on his experiences and to make decisions based on how he perceived himself because of his choices. Through this nonlinear process, he was exercising developing purposes for his lifelong learning which contributed to his emerging identity and values which would help guide his decision making. Each career experience he had propelled him toward different and better career opportunities, and each experience he had motivated him to make choices which were increasingly based on his morals, values, and identity. The weakness in Dr. Pasha's presentation of developing purpose is again in the fact that he did not define it as part of the learning process. Instead, he merely indirectly presented it as part of the process of learning how to live your life. His argument for the value of, his, of this component may have been stronger had he defined it to the audience as a reason for exercising certain tasks which he presented as part of his lecture. Dr. Posh describes how he started to realize that his knowledge of life was not as certain as he had assumed, and that he often changed his perspective on his understanding of knowledge because of the accomplishments of himself and even of his students, causing him to experience transitional knowing. In this scenario, one finds oneself viewing knowledge as less certain, thereby developing greater understanding and a desire to learn more. Dr. Posh mentions events in his life which fit the model of transitional knowing, but he didn't mention as much as he could have about the value of those events as examples of transitional knowing and how they affected his ongoing learning. Once again, he didn't define for the audience what this aspect of the learning process was and why it was important to him. In Dr. Posh's story about his master's degree program in virtual reality production, he met all of the goals of self-directed learning, which are to enhance the ability of adult learners to be self-directed in their learning, to foster transformational learning as central to self-directed learning, and to promote emancipatory learning and social action as an integral part of self-directed learning. He gave his students free reign to be as creative as they wanted to be with the best technology available without setting any limitation on what they were capable of. The only time he did set limitations was when he established the integrity of the program or when, they, when their work was not good enough. He even created a group environment which welcomed community involvement. The result was not only that the program grew immensely, but that its success called attention to his ability and expertise, earning him greater opportunities as both an adult learner and educator. My examination of different learning models is clearly aided by Dr. Posh's last lecture video. Many of the different learning models, both transactional and traditional and non-traditional, could be examined using his lecture as an example because Dr. Posh applied many of them to his last lecture. But this analysis was, has restrictions which limit the amount of examination available 
for this purpose. The purpose achieved in this effort is to better understand how the different learning models can be applied when teaching adult learners, thereby making better adult educators in this age of growing adult learner populations. I highly recommend you watch the video. It's truly fascinating. Well, that's the end of this video, and until next time, take care.